Yeah, good good question, Cam. Um, so look, there's very there's specific outliers of 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 clientele out there who who might need a very unusual crank length. Yesterday, I put a guy on a set of 145 millimeter cranks. Oh. Now that that guy had a very specific severe problem with his right hip which meant that he could only really you know the smaller we could the smaller we could make his pedal stroke arc the better he did but we're talking not so much about those oddball characters here this is just if if you're thinking well what what crank lengths should i order for my new bike there's four things that might make you drift one way or the other number one if when you're riding hard, if you self-select very low cadences, so let's say you've always identified as a grinder, you know, you're the guy in the bunch who pedals at 50 RPM, like this, you know, and you just say, well, I just pedal slowly, I just grind it, I don't have a lot of leg speed. If you're a person who grinds a really low, slow stroke, a lot of these people, and I'll, I'll say guys, because it is mostly blokes who've got a lot of um, neuromuscular strength in their legs, they're often stocky, short, powerfully built people. Often, but not always. If you're a person who self-selects very low cadences under heavy load, anything under about 70 RPM, if you gravitate towards that, there's a solid chance that your cranks are too long. One of the things that occurs when they're too long is that you will, you will, if you don't have the ability to, to shorten your muscle spindles in your legs very rapidly, you will start to just pedal slower so that you can stay within your physiological efficiency zone of, of your stroke. So this is something I've noticed over the years. A lot of these people, you, you know, they, they're a short, stocky, powerfully built guy with, with, with solid, powerful legs, and they're on 172s, and they go, well, I just, I just ride at 60 RPM. I just, that's how I've always been put them on a set of 165 mil cranks and their, their cadence just goes straight up to 90, 95 and their pedal stroke efficiency and their threshold power gets a lot of a boost from this. So if, if a lot of this, if, you, if you're listening to this thinking, gee, that, that's how I'm built and I, I often ride at 60 RPM when I'm going hard, there's a good chance that you might actually increase your leg speed and your efficiency by, by trialing some shorter cranks. So there's number one. Number two, hip impingement. This is the main reason we changed it with you. If you have, and we can link to the hip impingement yeah. video here, if you think or you know that you've got reasonable hip impingement and your knees tend to splay out to the side a bit when you ride and this sort of stuff, you will probably derive enough benefit from going down to a set of, say, 165s that it's worth doing. If you're going to make a jump downwards with all of these things we're talking about or a jump upwards, make it a decent jump. It's not often worth changing the crank length by two and a half millimeters if you're trying to achieve something. If you think you got serious hip impingement, drop down to 165s, yeah? So hip impingement is one of those things. As the knee rises at the top of the stroke, if the hip starts to run out of range, your knee will splay to the side, you'll rock, you'll get lower back pain, you can destroy the labrums in your hips, you can hurt your knees. There's a lot of downstream and upstream consequences of hip impingement. So running 165 mil cranks, if you've got some reasonable hip impingement, is always, always something to consider. So there's number two reason you might think about changing. Number three, the style of riding that you're doing. If you're a Criterium racer and you've got a big bomby sprint and all you do is you go out on weekends and race in the A-grade crit and you kill yourself and you've got a big sprint and you, you're, trying to, you're trying to kill everyone in the last 10, 15 seconds of the race and you're a big, powerfully built rider, going to a set of 165s would probably have enough downsides that it would not be a good idea, right? The shorter cranks reduce your ability to generate instantaneous bursts of torque, which is why they're not so flash with mountain bike and criterium racing. So if you're a crit racer with a big, powerful sprint, going shorter is probably not a great move because you need to be able to change speed in a crit race rapidly. The counter, the counter argument is if you're a triathlete and you're trying to produce steady state efforts for a very long time without a lot of variation in the load, very good move going shorter. It's a rare triathlete, because that, that I say triathletes all the time because time trialing is really where this occurs, where you're trying to generate that steady state output for a long period. If you're a triathlete or a time trialist, going shorter has a bunch of positive effects. You know, you can open up your hip angle, you can often lower the front end for aerodynamic purposes, but the ability to generate smooth, steady state sub-threshold or threshold intensity power is actually usually improved with shorter cranks. So if you're a criterium racer versus a time trialist, polar opposite end of the spectrum, you might want to experiment with keeping the cranks long for the crit racer 
or going short for the time trialist. So that's number three. That's more a performance orientated kind of reason to, to think about it rather than pain or, or, or a major physiological problem. And the last one is, this doesn't happen too often, but it happens often enough that it's, it's worth mentioning. If you're huge, mate, if you're six foot three or over and you're long in the leg, have a think about some custom 185s, 195s, 200 millimeter cranks. Wow. I see enough people every year that are six foot seven and powerfully built, and there's no, you can't buy Altegra cranks or whatever in 200 mil length. You have to get them often made, right? But there's, if, if you've got the budget um, and you've got the, the wherewithal to do it and you're willing to experiment, if you're big, and it's almost always blokes, I've, I don't think I've ever seen a six foot seven lady, but I'm sure, I'm sure there out there but if you're a big powerfully built bloke um, in particular long cranks 185s 200s wow. they work and almost always the rider comes back and goes oh i wish i'd done that 10 years ago yeah they do work you need to be pretty long in the leg you need to have an inseam up over probably 950 mil or so if you're thinking about doing this maybe even maybe even a meter of leg right you gotta be pretty <laughs> long um but uh those really long-legged powerfully built riders um, those really long cranks can be absolutely amazing for them yes. so that that's fairly rare but I'm sure there's enough people watching these videos that would think well hang on yeah I'm, I'm, I'm two meters tall yeah maybe I, I've never thought about that maybe I should and I've always used 175s and maybe I can find some some 195s or some 200s or something that have that, that they often need to be custom made yes. yeah but there's enough people that make custom cranks that this is a viable alternative so there's four good reasons to think about changing your crank length. Why did most bikes come 172.5 or 170? No idea. Your guess is good as mine, okay. mate. All right, just wondering. <laughs> There's some sort of mathematical uh, bell curve that someone produced once a long time ago, which has resulted in, in what you describe. And smaller bikes come with shorter cranks and bigger bikes come with bigger cranks, which is sort of a... I guess that's a reasonable that's a reasonable kind of extrapolation. Shorter legged and, and smaller riders will often prefer shorter cranks, but there's so much individual variation within those ranges that um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Ideally, what we would have is a situation where there's 165s, 170s, 175s, and then you could also order maybe an Altegra crank with 155, and you could maybe also order 185s. Maybe you know Shimano or SRAM or someone should start offering those extremes for, for people to experiment with. Yeah, hopefully there's uh, some product development like from, from Shimano watching these videos. <laughs> and they'll start to offer some 180 millimeter cranks or something for those people. They can't offer anything right now. <laughs> yes, they can't. We're not getting, we're not getting stock of anything no, coming through, but yeah. Good idea. It's one of those things. It's, um, it should be more variable than it is. Yep, cool. Thanks, mate. No worries.